Good evening. I'd like to call this meeting of the Lake Orion Village Council to order. Roll call, please. Ken Van Port, please. Present. Brad Matheson. Doug Hobbs. Here. Ray Hammond. Here. Jerry Nash. Here. John Ranville. Here. Three Strutt. Here. President Van Port, please. We have quorum. Thank you. We now want to mute everybody, except you. The purpose of this special meeting is to discuss the next phase of the water main placement project. Village Council meeting scheduled it for the fiscal year 2019-2020 budget, including tax rates, goals, and objectives and review is the second portion of this meeting. So I'll open up for public comment. Let's see if we have anybody that might call in or want to chat. President Van Porfley, we have no emails, no no chat, no call-ins, no public comments. We'll close call to the public and public comment. Move on to item five, items for consideration. I one water main replacement next phase proposed reduction. And Mr. Young, would you like to start? Certainly, it's council in your packet. I don't know, Susan, if you can bring it up or not, but there's a memo uh, that gives some background on the phases left to be done. Currently, we are under contract for phase one and two with Fontana, and that work um, is continuing this week now, where they're on Heights Road, and then once they get done with Heights, they'll be going over to Winter Sub. And that's all part of the first contract, uh, six million dollar bond issue, which the um, Montana contract is five point one million of that. So um, that's moving forward. So the next phase is three and four, and it becomes an issue because the funding through the state dwarf fund, the drinking water revolving fund, it had earmarked four million dollars for us for the next phases, which were originally phase numbers three and four. And that was again another four million or five million, depending on how the bids come in. Um, so we're at a point time-wise that we need to make a decision whether we're going to continue to proceed with the next phase three and four because their funding cycle ends on a on a year on an annual basis. We thought it was would carry over, and it only carries over for one year. And um, they're so they're now we're at a point decision point whether we need to proceed and if we can meet the time frame which would be by the end of may to have the plans approved and then commit to the, the um, project so that's one issue the other thing of it is if we don't make this round we would go back and be competing for future funding through uh, the drinking water revolving fund which is a competitive fund uh it's, it's a loan it's a two percent bond issue but it's still competitive but uh, I've gone through um, and working with the Hubble, Roth and Clark, a number of scenarios to try to cut back on that project because that included uh, some four inch and six inch water mains and th sections three and four, which are in the maps that you have. And uh, Eddie can explain the scope of work. We, we did cut it back to $1.6 million project which basically replaces only the four inch lines, which all happen to be off Orion Road, which is in Orion Township, uh, but there are water customers. Um, and um, with the timing and the funding situation, with our revenues cut back now and volumes of water at question, I'm, gonna, I'm recommending we hold off on proceeding at this time and wait for better times and conditions when things stabilize. And then hopefully also there might be some grant funding. But before we get to that point, I don't, uh, Eddie wanted to comment about the scope of work. We had a couple different options and um, what we're looking at. So I want to have Eddie speak for a few minutes on what we're faced with at this point for as far as the decision, whether we want to proceed with the next round, uh, continue with the next round for the uh, BWRF funding or not. Eddie, you want to put Eddie on? We have our Hubble Rock and Clark representative, Mr. Schmitz, available, sir. Yes. Yep. Uh, yep good evening. 
Yep, good evening. We hear you. And uh, just, just briefly, to go over different scenarios um, for water main replacement. Um, dating back to last summer, we had first um, looked at replacing all of the phase three and four, which was a part of the original project plan from a few years ago. Um, and that cost was $4.259 million approximately to do everything. Um, then we looked at a couple other scenarios. As Joe said, just reducing the scope to just do the four inch mains only, which brought it down to about $1.4 million. That's including contingencies and, and all engineering costs. And then we looked at um, what we did just a couple of weeks ago. We took our water model that we originally put together a few years ago and we updated the model showing all of the replaced water mains now west of M24 and assume that all of the other mains that we still need to finish this season here still, including the rest of Heights, and then the John Winter sub, assuming all of those are replaced to eight inch mains, like the plan shows. Um, we updated the model, show all of that, see what the results are for the rest of the mains east of M24. And the fire flows did show up, um, definitely in compliance with what they should be at. So uh, Joe and I discussed this a couple of times recently that uh, if the fire flows were within that possibly you could not trust the six inch mains Eddie, you east of M24. So we looked at sure. Yes. You, you have a question again? Well, you're talking and then it happened twice now. And then it just goes silent. And then you come oh. back on. Maybe there's something you're okay. doing, I'm not sure. Uh no, I let me see if there's something anything I could turn off here, but there's uh there's Jerry one has got his hand up. Council member Narsh has his hand up, Susan. I'm sorry. That's Council I member got it. Narsh. I got it. Yeah, Eddie, your computer was freezing up is all. I'm not sure what kind of Wi-Fi signal you got. Yeah, that's just right. the problem is. Yeah, let me check a couple things here. Could you hear everything now? Did it come through eventually? Just has some... Yeah, it freezes. It freezes, right. Eddie. Well, let me know again if I, uh, I try to... It froze up again. I think we're good at this time. You can begin. I'm showing a pretty good uh, signal here, but we'll, I am. Okay, so, um, and then going back real quick, when we looked at, again, the fire flows east of M24, we realized that a lot of the six-inch mains were probably okay for now, and maybe if you didn't have the money, that we didn't have to replace those at the time. However, we did look at one section of main on Florence, um, south of the Blanche Sims Elementary School, where you still would have some potential fire flow issues um now and also the age of the mains and some issues with the main that we would also recommend replacing that section between Shadbolt and Jackson so if you add that into the cost of replacing all the four inch mains you're at about 1.6 million so again just a brief recap all the phase three and four all the four and six inch mains we about 4.25 million um just the four inch mains 1.4 and then the four inch mains with the one section of six inch on Florence be about 1.6 million. So those are the three scenarios that we looked at. Also, Marvin Arsh. Thanks. Um, Eddie and uh, everybody, I just, I wanted to verify, um, we have, other than that section over by Blant Sims, we have fire flow pressures uh, that are uh, appropriate throughout the village at this point. Assuming that all of the mains in phase one and phase two are will be completed as per our plan, which should be should happen here by early summer. Assuming all those are eight inch, and then you take out all the four inch mains east of M24. Yes, we're, we're by the model that shows that everything else would be sufficient at this point. Now, again, okay. the six inch mains are not, you know, we don't put in six inch mains anymore, as you know. So we would still obviously recommend putting an eight inch because we don't know what the 
look like inside of those mains, you can cut them out. But in general, if you're looking at the fire flows, the model does show at this point, assuming all of the mains in phase one and phase two were replaced, and then the rest of the four inch that you would have sufficient fire. Okay, and then one last question for Joe. Joe, is that um, what you're recommending uh, that we do is this phase of it right now, the 1.6 million or no? No, I'm recommending we not take any further action until we've determined the extent of impact on our water and sewer revenues because of the downturn in the economy. Because we find that we, we continue the next project, we increase our costs and debt service, which means we have to have revenues to cover. Otherwise, we're going to be starting to eat away at our fund balance, which we're already budgeting to do that. Um, but I don't want us to take a chance when we don't know the extent of the impact of what the new normal is going to be as far as water flow. In the packet, I provided you with a listing of our highest water users, and you'll see that most of them are restaurants. Right, yeah. And so our budget projections and our rates were based on a certain volume of flow. And the rates from that, and I would be cautious not to take on any more debt at this time. In particular, what we have, as we point out, the flows are good in town. We, By the way, we do need to verify the flows with the fire department. Once we get all the water mains installed on contract, right now we have for phase one and two, we won't actually physically test and verify what the model shows. The fire chief or system fire chief, John Pender, is felt very good and comfortable with what we've had and what we've done. He's pleased with it, but they do need to go out and verify the flows on those sites. The other thing I wanted to mention too, in that bid that uh, Eddie provided on all, well, the most recent ones, we're now required to fund the replacement of the private service line all the way to the meter. And in that current bid of uh, 1.6 million, there's 215,000, I believe is the number. $219,000 of service line, replace, private service line replacement. And we technically need to go back and do the 39 or 40 services that we already ran into, which there still may be more, which it runs, I believe, um, five to, was it, or three to $5,000 of service line, Eddie? Is that a, well, depending on how long? We, we, we've been using about... 5,000, but then again, it depends on the length of, of the service, too. So if you've got 100, 100 feet back, you know, right. you could easily be tens of thousands of dollars at that point. So it's a guesstimate. Right, exactly. It's absolutely well, a did, guesstimate. You know, Frank did tell me he quoted St. Clair Shores 3,000 for short and 5,000 for long, but that's yeah, not, they're pretty short there, though. In general, even their longs are pretty short, right? Yeah. <laughs> Comparatively. So I just wanted to mention that's another liability out there that we got to address. Uh, once we technically when we finish phase one and two, we need to go back and replace those 40 plus other lines that we may find along the way as we put in the rest of the water main. But the Joe, testing, the flow testing is good. That's the good thing. I want to mention. John. John wants to talk. John? Yes. Sorry, the names are mixed. Oh. Okay. Uh, if we delay this, because we had already talked about this a few months ago, and I thought we were going to go with it, with a reduced, uh, but if we delay it for a month or two, is it going to affect any of our grants or anything? Yes, the funding, we will have to go back and reapply and compete again. Well, the amount of water loss that we have lost in the last five weeks, uh, four weeks, uh, is it going to make that big of a difference? Uh, can we, uh, we're going to reduce it to 1.5 instead of the 4.259. Uh, right. So uh, we're going to have quite a bit of savings. And right. as far as uh, water services, it, this uh, Orion Road and Winter Sub is. Uh, uh, going to be reduced to their tall flat ground. Uh, right. Uh, installation of the main is going to be a piece of cake compared to Bellevue and Swiss Village. So uh, uh, I'd hate to delay it. Right. Well, you're talking if about replacing Orion Road, you mean? Orion Road. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's not a, it's not delaying. It's pulling out. It's stopping our project. We would have to begin anew at another date. It's not a delay that Joe's recommending. And just to clarify, if you were to look at packet page 22, that's the remaining four inch that's in the village after we finish phase two, that's the bulk of it that would need to be done to provide sufficient fire flow throughout the village. It's in the areas of Jackson, uh, Washington. You're talking Washington. four inch or six, six inch. inch. Six You're inch. talking six, six inch. Yeah, six. I know where that is. Yeah, that's, that's I'm comfortable with that. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I'm comfortable with that. That would be phase three that we're not doing. Yeah, yeah, that's so, fine with me. That and oh, definitely. And wait, go ahead. I have one other comment, just for HRC, because Joe and I talked about this earlier today. The original 1.4 million that was given to us as an estimate in August of 2019, and then we had 1.6 million, which is a revision that was given to us from Hubba Roth and Clark on April 15th of 2020. The linear footage of those estimates are the same, 4,700. What's different is that portion for Blanche Sims School. Mm, right. And, and at $320,000 different. At 320 linear feet, it's about $600 a foot, which is not reasonable. It's crazy. Yeah, so, DPW could put it in. <laughs> so, so my point is, is that there's something else in there, and Joe happened to mention to me that it Probably is another fifty thousand dollars, which is in that two hundred fifteen thousand dollar figure that he mentioned earlier, which is on your packet page thirty six, for putting in those line replacements to the home. Possibly, that's all a guess. So um, my point is, is that I, I don't think the numbers are are Good. accurate for the Blanc Sim. Um, it's a guess. Sure. That's all we got to work with. Was there a joke? Go ahead. One thing about the water main you mentioned uh, in the on Washington and Slater and that area, that is 1940 water main, and there's a lot of likely lead gooseneck leads on those. So we well, got most of it is 1920. <laughs> well, we got a flow yeah. issue, which is one yeah. reason for the water project but now we have of course the DEQ or eagle now saying we have to replace a certain amount of those lead service lines every year so right just want to keep in mind we got unfortunately a number of issues that we got to address on the long-term accounting and that's just in the water area as we know we got other issues in the sewer area so that's another reason why i'm suggesting we hold off and try to get some other grants if the infrastructure on the federal level or comes through um we might have an opportunity to get this project um, paid for 100 percent or not have to borrow the money um, well you gotta keep in mind too that we've got the water resource commission 16 pump station issue that we've got in the background here that's going to need some funding uh and and so it, it's going to be difficult oh yeah yeah council member narsh yeah, I, I, that's what was on my mind as well as between the lift stations, if we've got adequate fire pressure flow right now, then I would be in favor of the manager's recommendation of tabling this project uh, until we have adequate funding and adequate um, knowledge of what our water use is going to be going forward uh, as we phase out of this. People aren't going to be rushing back to restaurants unfortunately, as fast as we think, uh, there's still a lot of fear out there. Um, so I would be strongly in favor of putting this project on hold, provided that we have adequate flow pressures from the fire department. Um, and that's what led us down this path to begin with. If we've satisfied that as of right now, clearly we have more work to do. Um, 
but with a funding issue the way it is, um, I would be in favor of tabling and accepting manager's recommendation because of uh, those and other issues pending. So move. Can I just add one thing real, real quick? Um, just to reiterate that when we looked at the model again, with everything done in phase one and phase two, your fire flows are sufficient on your six inch lines, east of 24, but still the four inch mains are still the issue. So what I was saying before, your fire flows would be all sufficient throughout the village once you replace the rest of the four inch mains. Where are those four inch mains? Those are all those are all along Oregon Road, Miller, Mandalay. You can see on the the section four, right? That Susan has up right there. Those are all four inch mains. Those ones that are highlighted. Joe, uh, it it's was my understanding. It was my understanding that when we test those in the past, we had sufficient fire flow out of those. Is that correct? I am not sure on that. I'd have to verify that with John Pender. Member Narsh, do you have some validity to your question there? Because on the map, it says four dash six inch water main. So we're not clear on what's truly four and what's clearly six. So some of it could be six, a little bit of it could be four, or it could be vice versa. We don't really know. I just don't recall uh, fire flow issues in that region. Right. Um, right. In other words, that might be a factor because of it's in the township too. So the only way we can determine that is by doing hydrant test and flow test. Correct. Mm -hmm. right. What's the remember? last? Oh, what's Random. the last testing we had? Do we have that somewhere? It was. It was a few years ago. We got to do it again, anyways, because of the way things are looped. And the improvements we've made, it may have improved overall. Right. Right. Council Member Anvil. Muted. Is that can't hear him? To the cemetery, Meriday, and uh, a small portion on uh, Miller Road, Converse Court, that complex there. Well, that would just stop off. They would still have to. Uh, They'd stay on the four inch. So that's about it. That uh, uh, eight inch wraps around Oren and Miller Road on Oren Road, uh, a ways, the first hydrant. I would like to ask a question of HRC because maybe I'm just not understanding this one map properly, which is packet page 22. The black and yellow check lines indicate a four or a six inch line. But the blue lines indicate 12 inch and eight inch. Is that all water? Yes. Yes. So why are we replacing four and six inch line or that the blue line is a replacement? No. <clears throat> the blue line is already there? Yes. Why aren't we looking just to stub it differently? Why is some of the blue line running right alongside the four and six? And they say eight and 12 inch. So, Whereabouts? I'm sorry? Whereabouts? Well, hang on a minute. Just quit, quit flipping around. See that hand right there? There's a blue line that's running right along. Leave that hand. Leave your, leave your cursor. Hold it. Stop. <laughs> okay. You see? No, it's gone. How about uh, there's two Flint water mains there? Yeah, Flint Street, right? Yes. It, that, that that showed the old. These are old maps, and these showed the old six inch, which was abandoned there. But the twelve inch we put in, if you recall, back about a decade ago now, I believe. Okay, so I wondered, but this is phase three. It says three right there. So all of those black and yellow are abandoned. Oh, yeah. Just the just the Flint Street. Uh, I'd say there's no four inch in the village anymore. Okay, done. No. They might show it on the map, but uh, not there. Okay. All right. One of the last pieces that was abandoned was the North Shore piece, which 
there was an old four, but there's also an eight there too. But the old four was an eight. Yeah, that was a stub off right. somewhere. So right. What is what does this map represent then? Well, it, it again, these are the mains that are in in the ground, but it, you know, Flint Street was obviously abandoned because we the upset where we put in a brand new 12 inch main back in 2007 or whenever that was 2008. So, but the rest of these are just shown that they're they're actually six inch, and the four inch again. Th this is an older version of the map. The neural maps we have, which is I don't know what page you had in the packet, but shows indicates better the side the correct sizes of the existing water main. This is an older version, and this was like one of our old proposals from last year, I believe it was. Gentlemen, I I am disappointed. Uh, I, I want I want current information, Mr. Randall. A uh, water main. If you're talking about Flint Street, Flint Street, Orange Road, and Mill Road, that eight inch wraps around the corner and goes up Orange Road to the first item. It's eight inch. The four inch was abandoned. 20 years ago, 30 years ago, whenever we uh, we renewed it uh, from Perry Street up to that point, uh, we put eight inch to uh, feed the nursing home. And we stopped the new 12 at Perry, correct, John? We stopped the, yes, yes, stopped the, well, that was a few years later. EPW put that in, the eight inch. So this map is inaccurate at this time? Well, just that corner. Confusing. And if you go to the next page, if you go to packet page 24 and 25, there's more That's, the individual sections. Yeah, you're right. Anyhow. And again, this corner of Miller, going back to Miller and Orion there, uh -huh. we've we have not had good records on that ever really. And I know Jeremy and I were trying to figure this out a couple of years back too, where exactly, and it was never, we could never answer, we could never get an answer on exactly how that eight inch wraps around. Well, I, marked, the goes. I marked the maps up and I've told everybody a dozen times. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna retract my earlier statement because phase three, according to packet page 24, it is complete. There is no four inch in the village. In right. that area three. Correct. That is correct. It's only in area four, Orion Road. Uh, Ken? Right. Yes, sir. Um, question for Joe. Joe, just in the section <clears throat> that we're talking about right now, that that uh, would, would be the 1.6 uh, million, how long <laughs> would it take? to get fire department water flow readings in those sections to determine. We know what the rest of the village is mm -hmm. meeting at, but in those sections that in the area that we're proposing, how long would that take uh, to get a hydrant meter reading, a flow meeting uh, reading? Just need to schedule with the, the assistant fire chief and his crew to do it. So we can do it this week if they're available and Able to do it, willing and able to do it. All right. you got to do is hit about three hydrants. Yeah, my my only thought process is provided. Um, I don't know if council is willing to table this issue based on those readings, but if we meet those recommended levels or we're satisfactory, um, I, I don't know. In my mind, that's a, a point that I'd like to know uh, sure. before we table. Um, I'm in recommendation of tabling. We've got a lot on our plate, and I agree with all the issues and the reasons for which the manager is stating that. Um, but I'm also looking at the public safety aspect. I would uh, I would like to see if we can get those readings and then move this decision if that's possible. I don't know, Joe, if the timing yeah. is crucial. It's up to HRC. They got to design the plans in time to get them to the state for review. So, Eddie, and I leave that up to you. We've also done those type of tests, as you know, in the past, uh, even in Lake Oregon, we've done it for many of our clients. So that is, we, we can do hydrogen flow testing as well, or assist fire department as needed. So if that's something that you would want HRC look into, I can talk to Bill Pennycook tomorrow morning and see what his availability is, or 
you know, any of our other staff members that could go out and do that or assist whatever way we need to. Um, and then beyond that, I know, Joe, I think you you had already uh, requested the 30 day extension of uh, Eagle. And I don't know if you've heard anything from that, but when I did speak with the um, Eagle engineer, Abu, about uh, the permitting, he did say that, you know, should be pretty straightforward. He's familiar, obviously, with the project because he reviewed the first two phases, which was a lot more involved uh, than either fees, phase three or four, or whatever portion we do. So he said that it wouldn't take that long. I, I think, from our perspective, we could get out whatever plans you need within probably a couple of weeks because you really wouldn't need to do uh, full blown topography on these plans. Um, it's more of a log job. So um, I think we can make the deadlines. Provided Eagle you know, gives you that extension and we could get back on the milestone schedule. Um, so I don't think that would be the issue. It's just, you know, if you wanted to get hydrogen flow testing, we probably would need to get that within the next week for sure. I mean, my thought process is to table this to the next meeting based on the results of the hydrogen flow testing to assist us in determining whether we table. Um, as Ken said, it's it's not an adjournment, it's tabling it for right now. Right. Um, if, if council agrees, I just, to me, that's the only thing in my mind that I don't know. I, I would totally agree with everything the manager's recommending, but I, I'm just in the back of my mind, what's that water flow in that region if we're going to vacate for a while? I think we should also keep in mind, too, that the project is not done yet, phase one and two, so hard to say how much different the flow test would be over there once you put the rest of you know phase two in place that but there could be a difference i mean you could try now anyway just to see what they're at but um you know again there, there could be a different reading later once the whole project is complete phase one and phase two but still being, being, doing yeah being that far away from phase one and two i i can't see there would be uh, half much. a pound difference, no, yeah. no difference at all. No, it wouldn't be much. No, so well, that's fine. So, so if Joe mind. can get a hold of Pender and do a flow test uh, next couple of days, that'd be that work. Yep, that would we can arrange that and then we can just have it on the council meeting for next Monday, the regular meeting. That work. We don't okay. need to have our engineers assist with that. No, no. okay, and um. Unless you're going to do it gratis. <laughs> we work something out. Keep in mind, please. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Keep in mind, please, that uh, what the village manager is recommending, regardless of that flow reads right now, which could change possibly after phase two is complete, is that we not continue uh, on because of funding considerations. Yes. So we could always vote today to still abandon the project and continue with the flow check or do flow check. And then where will we find the money? Is, that's really what's propelling this from Joe's side, correct? Joe? Those are options, yes. But the major issue right now, Joe, is the funding, correct? I mean, we don't have the funding. My mind, the, the instability of our sources of revenue are a major concern right now. So do, let's, I think you made a couple different motions there, Jerry, or would you like to stick with that option of testing first and delay? I, I leave that. I mean, I, I can remove that. Uh, I, you know, the, the original was to um, seek testing and delay, but I mean, if uh, where's the council stand on that? I'd be up for discussion. The original um, original was to go with the village manager's recommendations, which I supported as a possible motion from you. So let's just step back and what would you like to do at this point, sir? Well, I, I think then we continue with the manager's recommendation to abandon. Uh, but we also continue to see where our flow tests are, uh, but we don't wait on 
you know, I'll, I'll make a motion that we uh, move forward based on the recommendation of the manager and uh, but that we continue and request flow tests uh, as soon as possible. What if the flow tests are pretty bad? We can revisit the issue at that point. I tend to well, agree with Jerry and Joe. We're setting ourselves up. There's no right now. The the prospects for revenue decline are significant. I think things are going to be. Uh, we're surprised at the revenue problems we have over the next 12, 18 months. And I think to plan to go forward right now with this phase of the project is is frankly, I think it's foolish. So I think we need to suspend it. I think testing the water main. Pressure and flow is normal business. We should always continue to do that. If something pops up, there may be something small we could do, whether it be an isolated section or a pump issue, who knows? But I think uh, I think Joe and Jerry are spot on with our revenue problems. Uh, we're gonna have problems, we're gonna have we're gonna have issues. And I think it's it's our it's our responsibility to suspend spending and debt going forward indefinitely. That sounded like a support. Yeah, I support it. <laughs> well, that'd be the sewers too, then. We have yeah. a motion okay. on the floor currently to accept the village manager's recommendations and continue with testing and support. Any other discussion? I have one comment. Joe provided us with the top 100 water usage customers mm -hmm. consumed with. And on there is, uh, I'm surprised, is um, one of our council members even, and some people you might know in the page. 29. 29. There's a couple of people that have high water usage. Heads up, I asked Joe to check the source of information, but I just wanted to mention that there's residential units here that are using a lot of water, and we're not sure why. It could be a problem. It could be an error. It could have a leak. It could be. Mr. Matheson, you're on this list. Yeah, I know. 12,900 unit, cubic unit. Yeah. Well, like, How's that possible? We're, I, I saw that. And I double checked everything around. There's nothing leaking in my house. I know that. Trial leaking. The trial is not leaking. Nothing's leaking. Yeah, well. I've never found a water meter to be bad. So, <laughs> so there's, there's you're coming something. in the same as uh, as Blant Sims School, Brad. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so we'll check. The point of it is, is that, again, that would be if we were to find what the issue is, there's a possibility of decrease in revenues right there too, as well. Sure. But uh, it's something that we're going to work through. And um, Mr. Hammond is absolutely correct, Council Member Hammond, uh, between the WRF our water resources commission and our pump stations and this water main project we've got to, we've really got to pull it tight and so we've got a motion on the table we have support any other comments questions roll call please yep. yes matheson yes Brett? yes Granville. yes van Portfleet? yes Hammond? Yes. Sarsh? Yes. Motion carries 7 0. Okay, moving on to the budget process proposal for fiscal year 2020 2021. Manager Young? Yes, Council. Uh, there's a lot of information for us to go over with today, but I'd like to start first with the tax. Revenue and millages, which if you go to page 94 and your packet, uh, I've had to put together the information on our taxable values the past two years and our tax rates, what the impact on Headley is and what our options are relative to setting a tax rate and the revenues correspondingly with that, page 94. Uh, as you know, currently we we levy 13.1029 mills, which is between the general fund and the police, which includes a headly override millage for the police. So the the general fund millage is 10.1331136 in the 
the fire combines 2.9885. And we've had that same tax rate for the past three years. Uh, as you recall, we before then had the millage collect through the township and we were able to get it separated. So uh, that's the tax rate it's been. So we've maintained the same tax rate. Now the taxable value though, of course, goes up based on the Headley uh, increase. And this past year, it was 2.4% for this upcoming year, it's 1.9%. And that's for properties that have remained in ownership and, and not, not been sold because once a property is sold, it becomes uncapped, which increases our tax value, which the new owner would be paying higher taxes on, as well as any improvements to any properties, whether it's residential or commercial. So our taxable value has gone up 6.5% uh, this past year, which is significant and uh, is great. And long part of that is the 1.9% headley increase. So I've listed up for you some options to consider if you wanted to consider reducing the tax rate. Keep in mind that the revenues generated will increase no matter in either of these two options, either way it increases. So Today, the tax bill is $144 million, which is uh, $8 million more than last year, which was $135 million. If you look on the top right-hand upper corner of that sheet, you'll see that 18, 19, and 20 taxable values. And then down below in each column, I show you the revenues. So in 2018, it was a million seven, and in 2019, it was a million seven eighty one. And for this upcoming year, it would be $1,896,000. We levied the same tax rate, 13.1021. It's a 6.5% increase. Then I showed the next box down as if we were to reduce the tax rate by 1.9%, which is what the tax values went up under Headley, which would mean that you would pay the same amount of taxes, dollar amount of taxes, this year, as you did last year, if we reduce the tax rate uh, by that amount, which would be uh, on the page over, it would be 12.8532 mils. So it's a reduction of, the, again, the 1.9%. And uh, that would be a total reduction in revenues. Instead of being an increase of 115,000, it would be an increase of 80,000, so reduction of $36,000, which the taxpayers wouldn't pay. So if nobody, if you, they'd be paying the same amount of taxes as last year, assuming they didn't just buy their property. Another option to consider is the Headley override for the police department. Uh, that millage is currently at, uh, was at 0.1467. Uh, it would go up to 0 0.2081 in the highlighted in the yellow. The first row of yellow on the right-hand side, that shows you uh, if you were to maintain the current rate of that, the override, we would be needing to use 0 0.2081 mills because the police maximum millage is met with the current rate that we're using. So we can't go above that, whereas um, Using the Headley override, we can maintain it because the Headley override has a 1.137 uh, capacity, future taxing capacity. You see that in um, the fourth column there. As does the, the village general operating millage, we have point, uh, let's see here, 0.7309 um, tax millage we could levy at this time if we wanted to. But again, these proposals are based on keeping the tax rate for the general fund um, the current or as an option to reduce it by the 1.9%, uh, $36,000 reduction, or an option to not levy the heavy over, headly override, which is 30,000. So I just wanted to present you some options. There's various scenarios that you could consider, uh, but, Besides adopting the budget, this will be the second most important thing we'll do on May 11th, you'll do, which was setting the tax rates. So I want to make sure you understood and are comfortable with uh, what we're looking at 
dollar wise and tax rate wise because uh, it affects the property owners, the residents, and then of course what we have to operate on for our police and fire, police and DPW and uh, services for the community. So I don't know if there's any questions that I confuse you totally. Do you somewhat follow what I've been trying to highlight here? And I did show it on a graph down below the dollar impacts that the different options are. Are there any questions or comments? No. Thank you. Could we go back to, thank you. Uh, the, it would be nice to be able to reduce for our residents, but one of the factors here is a property value increase of 6.5% last year. We're expecting property values to decrease this year and next year. The one report that I watched, I believe you were on that webinar too, Joe, from the University of Michigan, said that they expect it to be 2022 before we come back out on a flat line with this. There'll be a spike. So I just wanted to mention that because I'm, I'm not sure how we could reduce 1.9 based on a growth year when we're going to run into property value decline here. Mr. Young? One thing I did want to point out, make sure I said that that 6.5% increase includes new investment, the people building new homes and new businesses, which has been a big factor. And we still have that ongoing, even today, we BZH just approved two variances for two new houses. Um, but certainly the, the um, I guess the worst case scenario is if one in one year Kelly came in under one. If you remember that year, I sent the ten packet here. One year did it come in with zero increase, it was 0.3 decrease. It's possible that there could be a headly decrease that comes into play, but um, which is another aspect of the whole property tax value, the base of which on our, our revenues are one part of the base of the revenues are generated. So, but the, from the trending standpoint, the tax rate for this upcoming year, coming July, is set and fixed. It was based on the values of December 2019. So those numbers are hard numbers. Those won't be changed until next tax day, which is this coming December 2020. Ray had a question. I just wanted to add, um, Based on just just the coattail on what I said previously goes goes for this situation as well. What Joe says is we're set for this year. When when we get um, into next year, we'll have more information. We'll know what's going on. Um, can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. My I just got a thing said my internet connection is unstable. I don't know if it was me or you, but anyway, no, um, we're set for the next twelve months as far as the six plus percent. And, and that is through real property growth, not necessarily valuation changes. So I think that's a stable factor for our decision making. The 1.9% to me in this environment, I believe we're just, we're at the tip of the iceberg on this community being impacted with job loss and, and um, businesses going out from underneath us. We'll know a lot more next year. I think for now we need to go, we need to abandon uh, walk away from the the one point nine percent that Headley offers us the option. I think we need to take the six plus percent in real property growth that's already baked in. And uh, on top of that, I gotta say, I think as a as a council, we need to be um, prepared to reduce our budget in flight during this coming year as circumstances dictate. i'm not I'm not saying we need to slash our budget at this moment. I read through it. Joe does a good job. We we are a, a fortunate body that we're in the black. Uh, but like I said, we're going to have a lot more information next year uh, or even in a few months. But I think this community is just seeing the tip of the iceberg of the economic impact that, that we're going to see over the next 12 to 18 months. So that's my nickel on that. And I, I appreciate you letting me get on my soapbox a bit. Thank you, sir. 
So there's no action needed on this item. This is more of a preliminary. And there's more to come. We've got a couple of budget session date in the work. Mr. Young has sent that out to all of us. Yeah, we want to talk about that before we adjourn tonight, if we could. What about right now? About the meetings? Mm -hmm. If you'd like to, sure. Because uh, I sent out a memo suggesting that next Monday is our regular council meeting at 7.30, which we're proposing we should keep it the regular meeting at that time because of the notice requirements changing the time, right, Susan? Yes. But but we could but we could have a work study session prior to the meeting, you know, say at six or six thirty, and then have the regular meeting agenda at seven thirty, if you're willing to do that. Otherwise another option would be to have a work study session Tuesday, May fifth. Monday is a, scheduled for a Planning Commission meeting, which we may or may not have. So that was a suggested another work study date because on May 11th at 7.30, again, the regular time, we need to have enough time to discuss the budgets, uh, um, which part of which is dealing with personnel and vacancies I want to talk about besides costs, but I did want to run that by. But so we've got some other things to talk about. Certainly we want to. We are holding back on any discretionary spending. We are not filling any positions, but I, I did want to discuss with that with you after we talk about the meeting schedule about some vacancies we do have and what direction you'd like me to proceed on those. But I just wanted to check with you, see if those dates and times would work for work study sessions on the budget, including the DA budget. I know it was next Monday before the regular council meeting at six or 6.30 acceptable or work for everybody next Monday? 6 p.m. Everybody good? Can we go back to full screen? Sure. Every thumbs up if you're good for 6 p.m. Okay. There you go, sir. 6 p.m. Okay, then Tuesday, May uh, 5th, do you want to do that at 5 p.m.? Schedule it for another follow-up session if we need it. It's five o'clock okay, on, on on Tuesday, May fifth. All right, John, are you good? All right, we're good. All right, and then uh, the May eleventh, we'll just assume we can meet at seven thirty. I, I don't hope if we want need to, we couldn't meet before then if we need to make decisions before then. But for now, we'll just go with the twenty seventh at six and May fifth at five. Okay. So we'll look to fulfill that last one on May 11th when we get closer. All right. Very good. So that ends this discussion. Earlier, you had mentioned that Mr. Granville could talk about DDA budget if he so wished to. Does that still stand, Mr. Young? Yes, I did want to talk to you about vacancies and something too, though. Yeah, let's talk about that first. Okay. I, uh, uh, vacancies. So you I thought you just mentioned you were going to bring that up on the agenda for Monday. But uh, I think it's very important that uh, we promoted a couple of people and the people that's being replaced. Uh, it's going to take a while. So I, we need to get we need to jump on that and get their uh, replacements into the group. If I could be specific, we we have an acting DPW director which we have a vacancy there for our, our labor staff. And normally we also hire a seasonal person to help with mowing and grounds maintenance. So we normally have five full-time people and a seasonal person. Uh, originally in the budget before March 10th, I had proposed to putting in the budget to have a full-time, six full-time people because we have not had good luck at getting competent, capable, seasonal people because the job market was such that we got the people didn't want to really take what, what it takes to be committed to do a good job in our community. But since then, since now things have changed, I still feel we do need to fill uh, the, the, the vacancy, at least the seasonal person that maybe could become a permanent person. If, again, Chris Carpenter, you know, is acting public works director, 
which he may or hopefully he will work out. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, I would like to at least hire a seasonal person with the prospect of possibly, depending on the budget and everything, move on. But I'd like to get clearance to hire a seasonal person in the DPW area. The police area, we have a vacancy there, too. As you remember, we promoted uh, Lieutenant Rossman up to chief and Sergeant Stanfield to lieutenant. So we have a vacant sergeant position. Now, we are in the process of testing internally, and Harold is still on here, right now. Uh, for that position. So we've got some time. I think you, within the next month or two, we expect to have some test results on the officers that are I, applying for the position. I'm thinking about probably within a month, we'll have the written test. Okay. Again, 30 days, and then we'll have an oral. Shouldn't take long after that. So I'm hopefully before July 1st. Right. Mr. Hammond, sir. Yes, I just wanted to ask Joe, um, on the seasonal help, uh, it's primarily for mowing and landscape cleanup kind of work. Cemetery. Um, I would. I, I'm assuming you know, but if not, could you um, do a quick cost benefit analysis of farming that work out this year? And uh, right. we look at that going forward. There's a lot of local mowing outfits, right? Um, and that makes our takes our cost from from fixed to variable, and we can negotiate. I I, I just I hate to take on employees right now. If we're going to come back in in a couple of months and, and look at cutting our budget, you know, mm -hmm. I'd rather give it to a contractor sure. that we can, we can muscle around a little bit and get a good price and, and hold them to task on performance versus an employee um, when we're going to have to tighten our belt, maybe. So That's I'd like to know those, those comparisons. All right. One, as you point out, we will need to negotiate with the union, as you know, I'm sure they have a cost and they're about subcontracting out work, but I'm sure we could work something out with them on that. Well, well, that was done once before subcontracted cemeteries out, and it was a disaster. Uh, no, we will definitely do that. Yeah. The other, the other position we have vacant uh, is the code officer position. Currently, is on medical leave, and we don't have any code officers. Harold is in the process. Chief Rossman is in the process of interviewing some candidates. So I wanted to let you know that that is a critical position from a standpoint of we need to do to keep our community up and in good shape. Plus, uh, we do have community development block grant money we applied for and waiting award on of almost $10,000 for code enforcement. So that position, that uh, the additional position hours, you can't supplement what you have. You have to add on to what you have to be eligible. So that's just another aspect of it. So I want to at least make you aware of the fact that we don't have code assistance, dedicated code officers. We certainly have police officers that can identify things that are an issue, but nobody uh, dedicated strictly to looking at code enforcement issues alone. Mr. Nars. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I just kind of want to weigh in. I agree with um, uh, Councilman Hammond uh, that if based on COVID and based on the economic impact uh, that may be a negotiating point. I know every community's um, uh, reflecting on their budget and doing things. We're doing the same thing in, in uh, another community I'm with uh, as well. However, the police, <clears throat> um, we do need to move forward on hiring that full-time officer. That's going to become an overtime issue really fast, and you're going to spend a dime to save a nickel. Um, that position. Um, uh, technically we need two full-time officers. We've been down since 1985 on one, but, uh, for the police department, they need to replace that officer. Uh, and I would also say that the number of hours that we had for our code enforcement, um, that's a busy, busy job in spring and summer and it's coming. And, uh, it is crucial to stay on top of that. Um, and they've got a training learning curve, uh, yet to train somebody new and that, those are two positions that are uh, extremely important. The code enforcement is not that expensive. Um, it is budgeted. It's a part-time position uh, without benefits, but it's uh, the intrinsic value to the community. I would strongly recommend that we move forward with a full-time officer, that we also move forward with the part-time uh, code enforcement, and then, and then look at if it's possible, even uh, subcontracting a partial uh, mowing if that is what it's needed until we can determine who's going to be the DPW director and and because that would be a full-time replacement, correct, Bill? 
Yes, I okay. prefer that way, yes. Yeah, I mean, and then we can make the decision at that time. Three. You're looking at two full-time DPW, the one to replace, or one, or was it a seasonal one? One. We normally would have a full-time and a seasonal. Okay. Vacant full-time because Chris, you know. Right. Uh, that's normal. Okay. So you're just proposing one full-time right now? and. And this is, so well, we're proposing looking at contracting out. Okay. But a replacement full time and a contract or just a contract? Just a contract okay. at this time. Because okay. Chris well, is still acting. We don't want to hire a full time if we're not sure Chris is going to be permanent. Okay. Right. I that was well, my. Yeah. Okay. I'm an advocate of contracting, exploring that as well. Joe and I talked about it earlier today. And uh, the possibility in uh, Mr. Hammond's session of a cost benefit analysis, the quickie would be good. So, anything else, Mr. Young? Uh, no, I don't know. We're going to talk about the DA next, or has anybody else got any comments additionally on the budget? Okay, yep. so Mr. Ranville, DDA, sir. You're silent. Not silent. Now you're okay. Good. You're good. Okay. Uh, I had just had one comment of uh, all this advertising, uh, this fifty thousand dollars a year advertising for downtown merchants. It just looks to me it's getting a little carried away. Uh, we all know they're there. Uh, added expense uh, because of uh, the construction on twenty four. Uh, I think they need to tighten their belt up a whole bunch too. Uh, I don't know if that billboard was ever put over on Baldwin, but uh, uh, I don't think that was necessary. Uh, too much, too much law. Well, the DDA, we also need to schedule a time for the DDA board to make a presentation on the budget. So I didn't know if you wanted to have them come in next Monday or the following month, Tuesday. Either one. Either one. Okay. I would say Monday. Because of that way, if we have issues, we can follow up. If there's a problem, we can do it on Tuesday. Okay. I know there's been some comments about uh, what's happening if we're not going to have a flower fair. How many staff members does that department need? And also, um, there's you know, we need to maintain our core or help our core businesses and, and as best we can. But like today, I happened to be downtown and going around just checking things. And I counted 10 trees that need to be like mm -hmm. four of them yeah. are cut down, six of them are, four of them are dead, two of them are getting ready. And I don't think there's anything for some of our, just our core services and that budget. But we'll get an opportunity to review that and look it over. So, anything else regarding DD? Anybody have any comments? Not great. Mr. sir. Yes, I, I just want to echo what John said. I read that uh, budget proposal, and it looks like a lot of fluff to me. I'm not. I'm not sure what the right number is, but I would be much more agreeable to tangible assets such as trees, as opposed to advertising for businesses that could uh, do some advertising for themselves. Frankly, um, if they're even there, if they're even open this year. And I just think, um, you know, like I said twice already, it's going to be a difficult year. And to go in front of the public and say we were advocates of fifty thousand dollars in in advertising when people are having trouble paying their yeah. property taxes and water bills is going to be a hard pill to swallow. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Okay, we don't have a need or on our agenda council comments tonight. All we do at this point is. Move to adjourn, correct, Mr. Young? You can ask for comments up to you. Does anybody have any that they would like to provide? I, I would comment that we do have the pre construction meeting tomorrow for the M.24 project, so we'll know hopefully better what their timing and phasing is of getting that work uh, accomplished here in the village. And as you all know, the Heist Road has restarted that water main project. And uh, they've got to actually close off a couple of streets that are not passable. 
Uh, Local traffic on Sherry. I think you can't get on to Heights Road through that downhill street right now. Mr. Randall, do you have something else? Yeah. Uh, if you're going to go out for proposals or find out uh, about mowing, I have them break it down for strictly parks and then strictly cemeteries. Right. Uh, well, I would have it broken down by the actual area. I mean, what is Evergreen going to cost? What is it? Well, cost? yeah, and that's right. Can right. And choose to maybe piecemeal a little bit. Right. Right. Stepper bids. Yeah. Very good. A motion to adjourn. Mr. Matheson, sir. I'll make the motion to adjourn. Support. We have a motion to support. All those in favor, with aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, we'll look forward to the next opportunity. I'm enjoying these uh, Zoom meetings. Um, and I would like to recommend that, that the council, when you're watching some of the DDA budget, jump on their brand marketing Zoom meeting. Jump on their promotion committee meeting. I've been doing that recently, and I've learned a few things, and I've been able to watch, and I understand it better instead of just me sitting back and guessing. Well, no, I'm...